All right. Good morning, guys. Um, back at it again with another MLB DFS video. I don't think we really want to talk about yesterday. Do you? No, no, I don't. It was it was pretty pretty bad. <laughs> I I convinced Funk yesterday to play Zach Eflin just because he had a good matchup against Kansas City and. If you saw Twitter, I posted that he had negative six fantasy points. It was be it was what was it? Uh, Flynn and Winker versus who were the other two? Yelich and Bradish, ninety four point swing, just for a two v two. So, yeah, that that was just the difference in cashing, honestly. But I mean, the rest of the lineup sucked anyways. Yankees stunk. Uh, Rizzo hasn't gone yard in. A month and a half now. May twentieth was his last home run. Uh, Torres, not much. Two for six. Milwaukee continues to do the absolute worst to us. And then we just had Fraley, like, but he was like twenty percent, so that wasn't much of anything. And you really just had to get some White Sox, I guess. Robert had thirty-five. Berger had twenty-two. What else was there? Yoshida had 51. I didn't see that. Quan went yard, which happens like once every blue moon. Bobby Witt. Cron had a grand slam. Yeah, it was not a fun slate. Dare I say, are the White Sox big? Swept like the best team in the MLB. Not swept, we won a series against them, which yeah. I don't know how it's possible, but... Um, let's just jump into this before I go crazy about yesterday's shit. So right now, pitching tool, Logan Gilbert, Logan Webb, Jesus Lazardo, Shane McClellan, Sonny Gray, Mackenzie Gore. It kind of just drops off a little bit. But what are you thinking right now? Because Logan Gilbert getting 31% right now. It's not appealing. Yeah. It's it's not fun, but it honestly looks like the best option at this point from what I've seen. I got him, Lizard, and Canning ranked my top three. Webb on the outside looking in just because I kind of like some of the Reds bats today. I don't know if it's just because I want to fit Encarnacion Strand in or not. That's like a bias thing, but he's 2,500 and he's supposed to hit absolute nukes, so... Hopefully, he can come through today. Maybe like three, four, five Cincinnati. But I guess you can go to Webb. He's been solid all year, honestly. Yeah, I think. I mean, Lizard at seven percent compared to Gilbert at thirty is pretty interesting. But I mean, Gilbert has looked really good as well. Uh, I don't know if it deserves a three to one ratio, but. Uh, Gilbert does look the safest. And then I like Canning just because I think the Angels can get to Servino uh, and give him some run support. So if he can pick up the win and a quality start, I'd be pretty good at 8,800. Yeah, I like a couple different pitching options today. I mean, Logan Gilbert, 9,900. Minnesota, sure. I also despise the Twins, so I'm going to be a Mariners fan today. Like I told you a little earlier, Logan Webb, you know, great pitcher. He's playing at Cincy, like in a, what is it, Great American Ballpark? Is that the name? I have no idea. But yeah, so, and Cincy, obviously they've been good this year. I know the last few games they've been a little sluggish, but playing at a good ballpark where, you know, they called up whatever that guy's name is. You got Ellie, you know, Fraley, you got some good bats over there. So I don't know. There, there's something about Webb where it's either he's going to do amazing and shut out the Reds or the Reds are just going to hit the ball like 15 times against him. Mm -hmm. That's the way I see it. Um, 
One thing to note too, Logan Webb's last two starts, he's had 50 or more fantasy points. I don't think he can do that today, but who knows? Lazardo is $200 cheaper, only getting about 6%. <clears throat> so I kind of like him. McClellan, 10K, he screwed me over in the past. I know Texas has been kind of bad recently, but all it takes is Corey Seager, Josh Young, Marcus Simeon, one swing in the bat, and <clears throat> his, his night's done for. Sonny Gray, 9,600 against Seattle, who strikes out a lot, is kind of interesting. You just got to ask yourself, do you trust the Twins to beat Seattle? I don't even I don't know the odds. I would imagine that um, I would imagine Seattle is a slight favorite. I'm going to look it up really quick. They're minus 140. Okay, yeah, so disregard anything I said about some, unless you want to take the risk. I mean, that's not that big of a difference. Um, no, I know, yeah. There's I'm no major saying. favorites on the slate. The biggest favorite on the slate is Boston minus 150, and the Cubs are minus 150. Everyone else is like minus 120, minus 125. Nothing, what? no major favorites. Hmm. Interesting. Um, you mentioned Griffin Canning. The Yankees are in last place. You love to see it. So you you save a little bit of money with Griffin Canning. Right now, he's getting like 7%. Uh, Severino's on the other side, who is just falling off the face of the earth. He was good at one point. Now he's not. Take advantage of that. Maybe, like I said, the main thing, he's 8,800. You get better bets. Um, what's up? Uh, the other guy we, we didn't talk about was Mackenzie Gore. I love playing Mackenzie Gore, but he hasn't shown the ability to pay off a 9,200 price tag in like <laughs> weeks and weeks. So I just don't think I really want to go there today. I wouldn't mind him against the Cubs. You can pay down a little bit and have a better, in my opinion, a better matchup in Griffin Canning against the Yankees who haven't been able to do anything. Pay up a little bit more if you want Sonny Gray. I think Gore screwed us over a couple times in the past too, so... He might deserve a suspension. <laughs> um, all right, let's move on to Stacks. So right now it's got <clears throat> right now it's got San Fran, Detroit, Dodgers, Cleveland, Boston, Tampa, Yankees, Baltimore, Angels. The whole list is right here. So what are you thinking of getting to today? It's honestly just like a whole bunch of meh. Um, I do like San Fran the most, just like the tool does. Williamson has been not very good. Great home run park. They're projected for 1.7 home runs on ballpark pal, which is tied for the highest with Cincinnati and the Angels. So I like them. Go back to the Reds on the other side, sure. If they can just literally get their foot out of the way of everything. Uh, they just have been so bad the last week. They're going to start dropping more games behind the Brewers, and that's not going to be fun. But uh, I, as I said earlier, I like the Angels against Canning. I mean, not against Canning, against Servino. I think uh, a couple of them go, go yard. Moniak and Otani have some pretty good odds to go out. I think either side of this KC-Detroit game is sort of interesting. Nine and a half game total, both pretty bad pitchers on both sides. Uh, Jordan Lyles is still like one in 15 or something. So you can always go to some Detroit or some KC. Bobby Witt probably projects pretty well. Uh, as far as like value, like Gunnar Henderson is still 3K for whatever reason. He should be at least like 3,500. I don't know why Fandle just makes him effectively min price for what he can do. 
Um, and then like the San Fran bats are pretty cheap. So I think a lot of people are going to get to them. Um, Texas kind of, I mean, McClanahan is obviously Shane McClanahan, but Texas is also like a great pl uh, play for like tournaments. Usually they they can drop 12 on just about anybody. Uh, the Cubs are projecting okay. They can score. And then um, I don't know much about this Priester kid from Pittsburgh. So I guess Cleveland is like sort of interesting, but damn, they always screw us. Yeah, San Fran, great ballpark. Williamson, not a great pitcher. I know he's a young guy, so it doesn't really matter to him right now. But Detroit against Jordan Lyles, um, division rivalry game, it's pretty important because the AL Central is, like, the worst division in baseball. It's like the battle of mids. Dodgers against Grayson Rodriguez. Um, Grayson Rodriguez is supposed to be this, like, amazing pitching prospect but he's not great right now. I um I remember a while ago watching the Stochastic Deeper Dive show, and Adam, who's a big Orioles guy, said the same thing. He's like, he's going to be good in the future, but a lot of people have high expectations from him right now, like for him to be amazing, and all it is is giving up power and runs. He has his moments, but Dodgers look like it, they're in a good spot here. Cleveland against Quinn Priester. I've heard the name before. I don't really know much about him, but I think this was the first um, big league appearance, so might be some short innings for him. Boston against Blackburn. Sure. Um, what was I looking at? All right. Baltimore against this is Emmett. Shahan, whatever this guy's name is, Baltimore looks good here. Shahan has been like okay. He doesn't strike out dudes a lot. I think Baltimore, just because they're Baltimore and they just get hot randomly, think that they can get to him. Um Tampa looks good here. Dane Dunning was a White Sox prospect and we traded him. Within the next few years, he's gonna be good. Didn't he just have, like, a crazy start? Like, he just, like, was the best pitcher on the slate, and, like, no one saw it coming? Uh, well, he had 60 at, like, 15% ownership three three slates ago, I think. <clears throat> Against Detroit, eight and two-thirds, two earned, ten strikeouts. Do I think he does that today against Tampa? No. He's always got a special place in my heart, but not today. Sorry. Angels against Severino. You've already kind of talked about it. Yeah. I know Miles Nicholas hasn't been great this year. Don't mind some Miami guys. Um, this is an interesting uh, batting sleep. So mix and match some guys if you like. You can definitely get a little bit different today, and hopefully it pays off. But it seems like San Fran, Detroit, and the Dodgers are, you know, obviously the top six. But Tampa, Boston, Baltimore, the Angels, even Miami look pretty decent. I also don't know this Xavier Curry. I think it's a bullpen game for Cleveland. So Pittsburgh looks a little interesting here. That's pretty much it. Shane McClellan has, like, cost me so much coin over the last, like, couple of years. But then again, it's also Texas, so they might get to him a little bit, but who knows? McClellan is probably going to drop 75 today. Who knows? Um, You want to do lineup generator? Knock that out. Yeah. All right, share screen. <clears throat> All right, FanDuel main. 
What do you want to do? Let's do all stack types. Balance. Sure. And then you want to throw. Uh, we can just skip it. Actually, go to top hitters and lock in. Slater, really? Okay. <laughs> Kerry Carpenter. And he's actually been pretty high recently. All right, just skip it. Cleveland. Oh, yay. And we got Mr. Otani. All right, let's just. Not let's chalky, do which is nice. A lot of these are not chalky, which is nice. 90% JD Davis. Damn. Yikes. One more Flores, Austin Slater. Really? Look at these prices. Holy crap. Yeah, we're definitely getting to some San Fran. <laughs> Sorry, but. Yep. Makes hey, sense. who knows? Maybe the Reds win today, but our guys just go crazy. You never know. Hmm. Uh, likes a little bit of Cleveland, a little bit of Baltimore, Adley, Austin, Santander, a little bit of Cleveland again down here. Cody Bellinger has been insane recently. Yeah. Holy crap. Bunch of dudes, 5%. I think it's because the hitting is just so shit. It's just going to have a lot of exposure to everyone. Mm -hmm. Mount Castle, 3K. Rizzo's down at 2.9. Damn. He should, be, he should be 2K flat. He's been so bad. He's going to be like 90% then. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is just a good tool to get to thinking what stacks you should or should not go to, then you can, um, you know, check the lineups, you know, check the ownership, projected points, and all that. Um, then you can just export it straight to FanDuel or DraftKings, whatever you decide to play through here. So, all right. Let's hear the home run calls. So... Course, gonna take a red, gonna go Fraley. He's going back to back. Then I'm gonna go to the other side of the game, go Patrick Bailey from San Fran, and then Josh Jung from Texas. I don't think you're gonna be shocked by this first one, Mr. Shohei Otani, aka owner of the White Sox, uh, Gunnar Henderson, and Paul Goldschmidt. I know Goldschmidt's facing Lazardo, but I don't know. Hopefully, if Lizard, whenever Lazardo leaves the game, he hits one. Who knows? And that should just about do it, unless you got anything else to add, anything we missed. No, just hopefully I get the lineup out on time. I completely forgot on Saturday. I just lost track, so sorry about that, but uh, – I'll make sure to get it out today and make sure to check out Stochastic's tools in our description for the data we just used and like and subscribe if you haven't already.